So the match that they decided to debut Okada in in, in a singles competition in AEW was with Eddie Kingston for this bogus-ass belt that they established two months ago when they had the tournament for the thing that they chased the cat that ate the rat that lived in the house that Tony built. Hey, let me stop you right there. Maybe I was wrong and under the wrong impression. Did they make it seem like there's... The tournament's going to be an annual tournament? I don't... God, there, there's so many tournaments, I don't know. The Continental Classic, the thing that crowned the Continental Champion. I thought they said it was going to be an annual tournament. In that case, what happens to the champion? But whatever, we'll get there somewhere. Oh, maybe we will. Maybe they'll just forget about it. But wh why would you make this match for his debut? Because Okada... Again, I've seen him in limited doses. We've watched a few of the Japanese matches. I think one of them with, with Twinkle Toes or whatever. But if you're going to debut him in his first singles match since he signed for however many millions of dollars, why wouldn't you put him with an athletic... It, Kingston, is, is, besides his gimmick, he ain't a guy that's going to be throwing drop kicks and doing high spots and running spots and drop downs and fucking leapfrogs and dives. And, it, is this the antithesis of what Okada would need to show off his athleticism, his whatever the fuck he's got to show off that he didn't show off here? Wouldn't he have done better with a an athletic baby, since he's a heel, an athletic baby face that can, you know, do some shit with him? Because what we got here was they started slow and tapered off. And again, there was, I mean, I even took, in the first segment, Kingston stuff just doesn't look good because he won't work a gimmick. He's trying to do these Japanese tribute karaoke matches. And they did fake shoulder tackles to each other, and Okada would roll out and stall. Maybe he was smart. He's like, what am I going to do with this guy? And then, you know, they went to a break. They came back. Kingston couldn't figure out how to get an abdominal stretch on. It, it should, Shouldn't there have been some technical exchange of holds like you would expect from the New Japan greatest wrestler in the world roster than... You know, he's Kingston's doing the fake slaps in the corner, and Okada is selling them. Okay, he did his drop kick, and that was the first thing that either guy did that looked good. And then Okada's selling these shitty open-handed backhands that you can't work anyway. Nobody can, like fucking death. And it was like they were frozen in amber. And then they stood in the middle and let each other fucking trade. Shit, Kingston's strikes look better than Okada's forearms couldn't shred toilet paper. And then Kingston tried to make a bit of a comeback. And then Okada hit a sloppy power slam and pulled him up and gave him a short arm clothesline. One, two, three. That was it. 20 minutes. And it... it, it that was one of the most boring, fakest-looking TV matches I've ever seen. Explain to me, Brian Last, what I just said that was not correct, what you saw that was impressive if you're a viewer wanting to be impressed by Okada, and how is this worth millions of dollars? Well, let me just say I think Okada's a very talented wrestler, but like with anyone, it all matters how you're used. Now. The other side of that would be they gave him a match where he won a title. That's the first singles match you see with him. He immediately wins a championship, seemingly setting him up for a strong run with his goofy sidekicks, which... A championship that they've established two months ago, but nevertheless, I see your point. But he'll be the one. He'll be the Seth Rollins. He'll be the one that establishes this new championship <laughs> on a worldwide stage. Eddie Kingston... I mean, should it have gone that long? I guess that's kind of Eddie Kingston's thing is that these matches, what he does, he does them and they go a while with them because that's what, you know, Kawada did in those matches in the 90s. <sighs> I like Eddie Kingston's personality. I'm not a fan of his stuff in the ring and I can't uh, say that. I, I, I can't say I'm a fan of his stuff in the ring. 
he won't work a gimmick that looks like he should be doing it. He thinks he's somehow been adopted as an honorary, you know, all Japan pillar or whatever the fuck. It does the same shit all the time. It's it. God damn it. But and this, I would not have given one of the guys in Smoky Mountain Wrestling this short arm clothesline for a finish. I'm, I'm, you, you can't use that for a fucking finish. Who's going to believe it? And now with the, they're diving off the roof and getting back up. And this thing is goddamn deadly finish. Help me. And then after the music played, after the match was over, and Pac walked out on the stage, and I'm like, what the... F is, is he a heel? Does anybody remember? He's only been... He came back last week. He's been gone for a year. Why? Who's the heel here? Who's supposed to get over here? He's just come back, but we're going to debut him against the multi-million dollar man? What the fuck is going on? See, the bad thing is my first thought was, and I think Pac is very talented, my first thought was, oh, good, here's Okada's first feud with someone who clearly won't be beating him for the title. Uh, I disagree with the phrase, Pac is good. He's the guy that you can time with a calendar when he stands up on the top rope before he gets his balance to jump off on some poor schlub that has to lay there and wait for it. He's good in the ring with quick maneuvers. However, his... Uh, maneuvers from the top rope may his his mental time. maneuvers his mental maneuvers are what he can do a bunch of shit but he does have not have any fucking idea of what he ought to be doing and when and what he ought to quit doing and when sounds like a good name for an album mental maneuvers well it could be the aw entrance music compilation do you have any issue with putting the belt on okada this early <laughs> i understand the concept and I would be, if, if any of the belts meant anything, but there's so many of them and they've been around for so sh such a short period of time that who gives a fuck? That's what Tony's done. He's everybody. The, the, Hook. Hook has the, the belt. The very next match is a title match. Everybody's got a belt or everybody has a championship or everybody's won a tournament. And you see guys carrying them. And what difference does it make now? The TNT title, the TBS title, the fucking Continental Breakfast title, the goddamn this title, and the Ring of Honor titles, and the tag titles. and the So no, theoretically, if they had some type of championship structure where each belt meant something, and Okada comes in and beats a champion in a theoretically good fucking match, I don't have a problem with that. But to come in and give him another one of these fucking secondhand belts in a rotten match is, I don't see how that... But you know what? I'd argue the other way, though. The TNT title, the All-Atlantic, it's not All-Atlantic anymore. It's the uh, international. international. A lot of these titles, if you want to say they're second-rate titles because of how they've been used, you could argue that. Not a fan of Eddie Kingston in the ring, but that title was established after a tournament. One person has held it, not for a relatively long period of time. If Okada gets a serious run with it, he could actually establish it as the only title there, other than, I guess you could argue, maybe the world title that hasn't been fucked up. Boy, you're smoking a hopium now too, aren't you? Because what other title? If, if, if he won the TNT title, it would be like, uh, like that's winning a jerk-off title now because of how it's been used. Well, but the thing is, I have no doubt that Okada will hold this belt for a period of months and months and months, but they haven't made any other... How can you make a championship or anything else mean anything when Tony Khan is the final say when it comes to booking? You think Okada's going to... No. He's going to come in here and say, oh, not just book... He can't say it. He can't speak English. Now he can some. But he th you think he's going to say, I'll just book everything I do like everybody else does? See, that's the thing. Tony Khan has squandered everyone's upward mobility by dropping the ball every time there's anything happening. The acclaimed, Wardlow, I mean, you can go down the line. So now the idea is he gets Osprey, Okada, and mercedes Monet, Three expensive, talented pieces. It's not going to get worse? All of a sudden, now he has to slot them into the show every single week. So now he has these three big pieces at the same time, making a lot of money at the same time. So now the issue becomes, can Tony Khan 
who has squandered everyone's. What's the word I'm looking for? They're, Could, everyone's, everyone's potential. Everyone's, everyone's potential. Everyone who's getting over, he's squandered it every single time because of the booking. He has these three at the same time. He's not going to squander it with them? Exactly. How can he How can he make these people worth this much money? And then that's what I, was, I think I said on one of the programs last week. I don't know. If if he could get the rock for ten million dollars, if he could make ten million dollars back on the rock, if I don't know if there's if he could get any major star that he could make his money back on, because they would be devalued in this in this environment, everybody is. And and then something you mentioned happened after that here on the program with Renee and Willow and Statlander and Stokely Hathaway and Monet comes in and they do some scripted business skit, uh, whatever in the back. It looked like a reading for a scene in a play that they were just just reading through, not like the actual performance. And th they think they're dramatic actresses. And Stokely's trying to be funny. And poor Statlander, the only one, out, out, including Mercedes Monet, I know she's over now, but as a professional wrestler, I think Chris Statlander has a lot more goddamn potential than Mercedes Monet. Whether she'll ever get to realize it or not, being stuck here is another fucking issue. 